Bonjour, and welcome to the Amateur Detective Club. This club is exactly how it sounds. A bunch of amateurs talking about their favorite mysteries. So if you encounter a real mystery or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Do not come to us. We do not know what we are doing. But enjoy the program. Allons-y. Let us begin. Now I'll call this meeting on the Amateur Detective Club to order. My name is Trish Millis Aussie Floof. I'm Melissa Mealy, the spy. I'm Tyler Riley, cop and a half. <laughs> a cap. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. <laughs> Audible's offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30 day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash ADC Pod and browse the unmatched selections of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADC Pod. I again said download weird. Melissa, are you going to put me on blast for it again or what? No, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that's, hey. that's good. That's good. Stuff. Just. Fired from the hip. Do you got a recommendation for the folks? I do. Mm. An autobiography called The Mother of Black Hollywood by one Miss Jennifer Lewis. Mm. That sounds cool. Yeah, she's fantastic. And she has, like, played a mom essentially her entire career. Like, she's yeah. only, like, a few years older than Angela Bassett, but still was her mom in, um... What's Love Got to Do With It, the Tina Turner biopic. And yeah, you might not know her name off the bat, listeners, but if you look up Jennifer Lewis, 1N, uh, you'll probably recognize her. Absolutely. Is N and Lewis? <laughs> 1N and Jennifer. Like, it's not two N's in Jennifer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun how some people just have such mom energy that they always play moms in everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have had people younger than me play my parents so many times at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to get it out of their recording, but in case you hear some whirring, uh, there is there are a couple of fire trucks outside my building because there's a fire two doors down. And by doors, I mean, like, buildings down. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> not like... Literally the meme. This is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not two apartments down. Um, it seems to be contained. I went downstown, downstairs and investigated. And... As any good amateur detective would. That's right. Uh, yeah. I can't smell any fire. Um, tons of my neighbors are just outside... No, watching because there's nothing better to do because there's a <laughs> pandemic and this is very interesting um, this is better than Netflix yeah <laughs> I'm sure people are concerned and uh, I have a relatively solid escape plan if need be I also think if it starts spreading then I am uh, probably going to know about it pretty with, enough, with plenty of time mm -hmm. so so There's if the that. episode is short, <laughs> yes, you know. Tyler and I will just wrap it up, and you know, <laughs> yeah, you can come over to my place and we can finish it up there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh, criminy. <laughs> yeah, New York is such a weird place because I feel like oh, in most yeah. places, if yeah, if uh, if you had like if your neighbor two doors down, their place was on fire. It would be your whole day. And in New York City, we're like, oh, there's a fire. Seems fine. Yeah, I mean, Yikes. also, if, you're, if your neighbor's house was on fire, it would probably be the entire house. That's true. Whereas what it seems like is there seems to be some sort of fire within an apartment. You know. Yeah, it is. I mean, they've been out there for a while, and there are two fire trucks, and there are fully 20 plus firemen, fire people outside. Go down there and get some numbers. Firefighters. 
Thank you. Fire officers? No, that's wrong. Yeah, firefighters. There are fully 20 to 30 <laughs> firefighters outside. Um, and one of them watched fire me. carriers? Yeah. <laughs> one of them watched me walk back into my building, so it seems okay. Uh, she, he was like, hey, lady. What are you doing? No. Get back out here. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> So today, we are talking about the Netflix movie. Was it just a Netflix movie? It only went to Netflix, yeah. right? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was, well, it was originally supposed to go in theaters, but because of the pandemic, uh, they sold the distribution rights. Got it, okay. But it wasn't intended for Netflix. What is? Uh, any Adam Sandler movie that's come out in the past few and years. drinking that water. Is... You can't say <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Uh. Yeah. Uh, so this is The Lovebirds 2020. Uh, yes. That's not part of the title. It's just the year it came out. And it is starring Issa Rae and Kumail Nanjiani. So it opens on a first date of these Ugh. two characters. <laughs> it's really cute. It is. They're, they got a great chemistry. They're very cute together. They do. And it is Leilani and Gibran uh, are the character names. And they're having a great first date. It's one of those 24-hour long dates where you go out for dinner and then you go out for dessert and then you keep talking and then you hang out all night and then you go out for breakfast. and Great. Just great first date. And never experienced that a no good first date no the thing you're describing of like it it, it extenuate like it elongating itself oh yeah to that i've never experienced that um, what do you mean i'm confused but, well no i've never experienced a thing of like okay we're gonna get like dinner or brunch and then you end up like it's eight nine hours oh, later and you're still gotcha. hanging. i've never Maybe it's because of the people I, I tend to go on dates are like, well, I gotta go, and I'm done. And <laughs> very organized and type A. Oh, I've had it happen a couple times. One was... I've had it unintentionally happen as well. Mm -hmm. Were you okay with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was sorry, Tyler. <laughs> Usually it happens because most both people are interested in it occurring, but... You know... I take it back. I, I went to see uh, a movie with one of my exes, and it did go, like, pretty late that evening. But, like, I don't know if she spent the night. I can't remember. But, like, it went pretty... No, she didn't. She didn't. I didn't even kiss her on the first date. And she was like, why didn't you? I was like, because it was a first date. What the hell? What the... No, what the... Ding, dang it. Hell, I think it's okay by our standards. Yeah, yeah I've had it happen a few what times. What uh, one with my current boyfriend. It wasn't, yeah, rich. Uh, our first date was it was pretty lengthy. Uh, we also had mm -hmm. like a non-date first date because mm -hmm. we were at other pe another person's wedding. And you said, "Stop it! We're gonna do it now. <laughs> it's our turn. <laughs> All you people, stay here." Uh, no, but uh, actually, the brides count that as our first date they count their anniversary as ours which is cute uh we count it a little later but uh yeah i mean we we hung out the entire wedding so it was basically a date um all right yeah Ooh, at what point does hanging out turn into a date so here's another fun when little... you didn't call me back <laughs> <laughs> So I was, uh, you said, here's the thing. Yeah. I once went to hang out with a person as a friend. This is, I said, I was sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> how... Hey, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you putting me on blast so much. Kick a man while he's down. Crime it. <laughs> That's not how I meant it. I, I, you might as well have gagged. You just 
Could you just vomit? It was on January 23rd where Tristan was dunked to death. <laughs> Don't mind if I do! <laughs> that truly was not not oh. what I... Uh, truly was not what I was trying to imply, but I'm glad they read so well. <laughs> Uh, no, back in the day, someone had friended me on Facebook, and I accepted the friend request because he said that he saw me in a play. And I was, you know, a young actress, and I was like, oh, well, that's nice. Uh -huh. Years later, we were messaging, and he was, and it, it, he said, you know, hey, why don't we get lunch? And it had kind of seemed like his profile for that he had a girlfriend. So I was like, this is clearly a, you know, friend lunch, and it's lunch, you know. So lunch seems like an innocuous thing. It's like, okay, great. After lunch, we went, and I was single at the time, by the way. After lunch, we went and got, and like walked around some shops, and then I had a haircut. Um, so I went to my haircut, and we were texting. And then after... Uh, later on that night, I was going to an event with a friend of mine, but I had some time to kill, and so he invited me to come out and hang out with him at Brooklyn Bridge Park, and we did, uh -huh. and then we had dinner, and we did not kiss, but then I, like, we kept on texting. We were texting for days, and then a couple of days later, I was like, hey, do you want to go hang out? Like, this seemed like something was starting. He's like, sure, yeah, let's, I have a party to go to, but let's meet for a drink at this place in Union Square. And that was when he told me he had a girlfriend. And I was like, okay, this is and what's a, a weird situation. It, it got weirder. I'll leave it at that. It did get weirder, but, but yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, he definitely knew that like something was happening between us and mm. let it go that entire evening even though you know nothing happened really we hung out mm. the entire day affairs of the hort like we said before on the show <laughs> yeah but yeah no otherwise i have had i mean i assume you're cutting all of that out i the dunk was good enough that i might keep it <laughs> uh very funny <laughs> But Melissa, you're very active, and so is Rich. So I wonder, like, do you feel like you would be good at a reality competition-based program? Do you know? I think we might. Well, that's an argument that our <laughs> couple, Jabron and Leilani, get into. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we cut to four years later. We get, like, a title card four years later, and they're fighting about dumb things. And apparently the fight has started with she thinks that they'd be great on The Amazing Race and he does not think so. And it has turned into a whole and thing. And it's also unclear whether he's actually watched the show or not. But it, it, then it turns into other arguments and it's just like silly, silly, oh, silly things. But they're also getting ready for a party. And they're getting in the car, getting ready to go to the party. They're in New Orleans, ostensibly, but it doesn't look like New Orleans to me. I, they mention also that there's a guy that, that, um, Kumail hates. I don't, I'm not going to remember their characters. I'm just going to refer to them by their actor's name. Sure. Kumail does not like this guy. I think his name is Kevin. Keith. 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 Because mm -hmm. he still steals Cat Williams material. Yeah. yeah. And everyone thinks he's funny. And there's a callback later to that. I'm just going to say it now yeah. because I don't know if we're going to remember it where he, we see him do it and the impression he does of Cap spot on. <laughs> Amazing. What? I thought it was very funny. I thought it was awful. Okay. <laughs> and I thought that was the, okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. He plays pimp named Slickback, right? Yeah. Yeah, I sounded exactly like a pimp named Slipay to me. And that maybe you haven't voice. heard it in 10 years, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you taking upon me so? A man can only take so much. 
they get into this, as you say, there is this argument, and it's one of those things of like I, I've had this habit. I I've, I've broken up with someone where we started arguing about something stupid, and it slowly just turned into like this isn't working out, yeah. which is oh, it's the worst. Yeah, it's it's really heart wrenching, and I had had an argument about kind of dumb things with my boyfriend the night before, and uh, I told Tristan and Tyler earlier, but like it made me text my boyfriend and be like, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Cause yeah, it's ignore the flowers I sent you then. And the car. <laughs> <laughs> she I told mean... you already she's getting her hair cut. Yeah. So it kind of, they get to the crux of the argument they're having, which is she wishes that he would like share more with her. Mm-hmm. And right, because he's creating a documentary. Yeah, right? yeah, he's and a he documentary filmmaker. Yeah, basically, she thinks that he doesn't care about her opinion and just like keeps to himself, and yeah. he thinks she's a little shallow. Yeah. Because she wants to go out all the time, party all the time. She keeps up with people on Instagram, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Party all the time, party all the time, party all the time. Yeah, he uh, roasts her about her phone at one point where, you know, he, she's always on her phone. She's like, he says, you know, they don't let you have your phone on those reality competition shows. You wouldn't last a minute. Yeah, the amazing rate. Yeah. Yeah. And as they're on their way to this party, they break up. Yes. And five seconds later, a guy on a bicycle comes onto their windshield. Whammo! Yeah. yeah. He does run a red light. He does run In a red light. In the cyclist defense. Yeah, yeah. He runs a red light. <laughs> yeah. Hits this guy. And then the guy gets up and starts bicycling away, right? Yeah, they're like... Or does he run away? Is well... He on foot? No, he, he cycles. He cycles away. He cycles away. away. But yeah, no, before that, they get out of the car and are like, oh my god, are you okay? You know, yeah. trying to trying to get his information, and he leaves behind his phone. Yes. And they're like, that but don't important. you want his phone? Uh, don't you want your phone? And he, he just fully is like, no, 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 never mind, everything's fine, I'm fine, goodbye. Um, Zip. Yeah. So... And a guy comes up, and he says, I'm a police officer... I need to use your car. No badge. Nothing. These two people are normal people in a panic situation. Yeah. I understand this. That they would just be like, okay, okay, okay. Well, the man was armed. The man was armed. With white privilege. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, And a terrible mustache. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. However, he does have a mustache. Yeah. He does have a mustache, and he's, he uses their car to catch up with bicycle. Yes, as they refer to him for the rest of the film. Yeah, yeah. they don't know his name. <laughs> and he he's catching up. He's catching up, and they're kind of excited because you know they're part of you know a police chase, and it's exciting. And then he catches up with bicycle, and then he hits him with his car. Proceeds to run him over once. Back up twice, once more forward, and I can't remember. Was it Murder of Roger Ackroyd? Whereas, like, you have to go back and forth when you hit someone with a car. Yeah. And I remembered yeah. as I was watching this. That's why I thought of that. Yep, I was thinking of it too. Yeah. Yeah. So. I just knew. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> And then he just leaves. Like, he just, he like, just, stoically, he... like, gets up, walks over, out of the car, over to the body, takes something off of his person, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then turns to them, who are panicking in the car, Jabron and Leilani, I mean, are mm-hmm. panicking in the car, as they're piecing together the fact that he's probably not a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And it looks like he's about to then, like, pull a gun out of, like, his waistcoat or whatever Mm -hmm. to shoot them. But then stragglers from the street 
turn uh, into this dead end, and he it exits very quickly. Yeah. Yes. So One these... of whom mm-hmm. is a very funny New York-based comedian named Kat Cohen. She does a lot of musical comedy. She used to do run a show at out a club coming um, over in Manhattan, and she's really good in this scene. Yeah, she's very funny. They're both good, and they're credited. No, they, they, they hear sirens. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, they are credited. This couple are credited as Mr. Hipster and Mrs. Hipster. Yes, that is correct. Which is very oh. fun. Two things before we get any further, and I meant to mention this off the top of the episode. One, this is a romantic comedy and murder mystery, so it's th- chock full of jokes. It's great. Oh, yeah. Two, it is rated R for restricted. So it's a kind of a departure from our normal content. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's true. You can't watch... I mean, you can watch it with your mom, but, like, if you're 17 or under, you have to have somebody... With you. I don't know. We watched Detective Pikachu. <laughs> okay. That foul mouth little thing. It'd be really funny if he was. I know, right? It'd be really funny. <laughs> if just hearing Pikachu say the word mother <laughs> I would I would ascend. <laughs> if he was voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, if only. Yeah. Oh, oh, did you hear that Nicole Byer is like angling for the Jigglypuff? Yeah! I really hope they let her do it. Uh, she would nail it. That's funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she hosts a show called Nailed It on Netflix. <laughs> Which is where the movie we're watching can be found. Speaking of the movie. Yes, so these these white hipsters. Um, Why do you need to note that they're white? Because of what happens in a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're uh, right, though, but it hurts. <laughs> yep, they call the police. And they call the popo. Ron and Leilani have a little bit of a conversation before deciding that it looks way too suspicious that their car ran over a person and they've run they make a run for it well they they try to explain to the couple what happened and realizing how crazy they pulled and jabron pulls leilani and says all right on three on three yeah she's like on three what She's like, on three. <laughs> Counts to three. And then he runs and leaves her. And she's like, Jabron. Yeah. It's like, don't say, <laughs> Leilani, don't say my name. <laughs> Very solid. <laughs> yeah. And then Kat Cohen calls the Popo. And she's like, yes, yeah, she, she's, you know, black. And he's I, some sort of person. And I don't think they did it because the <laughs> people are cut. And it's just, they just happen to be. And it's very solid. Yes, it is. It is really it's very funny and sad, yeah. but true. Um, very good. Yeah. So, and I caught myself in this moment, not exactly in this moment, but I was like, you know, they really should have just waited for the police. And, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm white. Mm-hmm. I'm white. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I get yeah, it. Forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, of course. Uh, so, they go to a diner. Oh. Oh, this scene is... It's really good, but yeah. there's a thing in it that just drives me freaking nuts. But get to the scene. <laughs> They're just staring down at the table at the diner. And the server comes by and she asks them what they want. And they ask for an alcohol. Two alcohols, please. And then one... Yeah, two alcohols, please. We don't serve alcohol. And uh, cut to their milkshakes and french fries in front of them. Which is... No. There are milkshakes. And then halfway through the scene, out of freaking nowhere, fries are just there. And then they go away. And then they come back half-eaten with ketchup on them. And I... Oh! Well, you just missed the bit because the camera wasn't on the server who dropped the food and walked away. 
<laughs> that must have been it. <laughs> For whatever reason, and I think it's because it was so hounded to me so much in acting school, continuity errors like that just drive me up a wall. I never noticed and, them. And I'm sure what happened was this. I'm sure they did a couple of different takes, and I'm sure that the Issa Rae and Kamal were improvising lines and stuff and so they wanted to keep like the he does his bit about the milkshake container because it's very solid it's Seinfeld-esque of like why do they always give you the thing that the milkshake was made in and you know that doesn't happen like the spaghetti and part of me is like they probably he probably might have improvised that and so they had to use that take because it's very very funny Mm -hmm. but oh my gosh and they just oh rely on people being like me and not noticing at all. Yeah, and 80% of people, and like, I don't, the first time I watched it, I didn't notice. And then and then I heard about it online, and then I, oh my gosh, it just, ugh. Oh, yeah. And it, if I ever I, watch it again, I will I will not be able to unsee it, I'm sure. Well, I'm, I'm trying sorry. to ignore it now. Yeah. I'm trying to ignore you talking about it so that I can enjoy this movie in perpetuity. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's just, I hate that I have those goggles sometimes. Does that make sense? No, that's fair. Like, yeah. I really Stage hate... magic, like, you really have to step your game up to impress me at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm just so, yeah, you're just so used to certain things. And you've been trained to look for certain things, uh, you know, in the fields that we chose. Yeah, I'm much, yeah. Uh, I'm much more nitpicky when, with theater stuff than I am with mm-hmm. film. But, that that tracks. Yeah. I mean, it's to a point as well where I'm like, I can see where the composite plate is for a CGI thing. Oh. And I'm like, I just wish that wasn't the case. But speaking of tracks, though. Thank you. Gibran and Lily track backtrack. And think about the events that have gotten them to this point. Very good. Gibran yes. wants to turn, like, thinks that they should turn themselves in. Leilani is like, I'm black. <laughs> this is not going down that way. <laughs> yeah. And then she proceeds to interact with him as if she were a police officer questioning oh, him. Very, very funny. Yeah. And pretty much it loses the fact, like, yeah, they're not going to believe you, and they might, in fact, just beat you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she refuse, receives a phone call mm-hmm. first from the police. Well, first she receives a phone call from uh, the people, the party that they were supposed to go to, and they ask. Oh yeah. They ask them to pick up like a bottle of wine, and then she's like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 absolutely, no problem." And then the next phone call, mm-hmm. she gets this unknown caller, and it's the police. And she says that she's at home, and uh, the officer asks about her car, <laughs> and she's like, no, my car is here. I'm just at home. And she says she's getting up to go look out the window, and she's like, oh, no, my car is gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then the waitress comes up and goes, "Is that a, that'll be all? And she's like, are you at a restaurant right now? <laughs> and she's like, uh, uh. And then she- Gibran takes the phone and just drops it in the milkshake. I hate it so much. I understand the panic, but like you, why? Yeah. Just take the SIM card out. Go and get a new SIM card. Yeah, People you don't, don't know, know how to commit phone, crimes. Like, well, I mean, she's been touching her phone, and now you can't drink the rest of the milkshake My because gosh. the phone's in there now. Yeah, that's been like out in the elements. Wasted. Now I I drink your milkshake. <laughs> In 2021, the year of our Lord. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there will be blood reference. <laughs> so now, in Amazing Race fashion, she is without her phone. Mm-hmm. And so they get out of there. And they call an Uber. They call an Uber. Because it's an Uber pool. Yeah, he orders an Uber pool on his phone. <laughs> and, and the couple in the back is, uh, yeah, another couple co- gets in and they're like on their first date. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going really well. Yeah, and they're making out, telling each other how great they are. And she she yells at them. Before they get in the Uber pool, 
Ubi poo, if you will. If you will. <laughs> if you must. <laughs> but we are now out of the, the Ubi poo. Where are you? You got some work to do now. <laughs> so they get an alert. We really got to cover Scooby Doo. We do. Oh, yeah. So they get an alert on Bicycle's phone <laughs> as they come to refer to the murder victim as Bicycle. So on Bicycle's phone, Bicycle. there's a calendar alert that says that they have to meet Edie, that he has to meet Edie at this particular bar. So that's where they go, because Leilani thinks, okay, so we're going to talk to Edie and see if she can't help us. Basically, they decide to solve Bicycle's murder. Yeah, to clear their name. Right. And then if they can deliver to the police who actually did it, then they'll be in the clear. Great. Yep. So they go to meet Edie at this bar. And they get a text message that says she's up on the balcony. They go to meet her. Uh, and it is the actress, Anna Camp, playing Edie. So she is very, Edie is very upset that Mustache has sent proxies and not come himself. And so she takes them out to, I don't know, the back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they go out to, um, like, this parking garage, it seems. That's, you know, downstairs in this cl- uh, this club. Hoods are then thrown over uh, Gibran Correct. and Leilani's head. They're whisked away to a barn. The hoods are taken off. <laughs> they are in a barn. They're in a barn, yes. And they oh. are greeted by um, Edie and a man with a hood with eye holes on his head. Oh, boy. And... She goes, you think you can threaten a congressperson? And you hear this voice go, you, should you just tell them I was a congressperson? Yeah. And she's like, oh, just take off the mask. It's fine. Yeah. And it's this old schmuck. I don't know. Yeah. Some congressperson. Yeah. So apparently, like, the two are being blackmailed by whoever Bicycle was. Right. And as punishment, they have two options. One is... A big pan of bacon grease. On the face. On the face. <laughs> On the face. <laughs> and the other one is a mystery behind a door number one. And Gibran chooses the mystery door, and it's a horse. And he says, what is it going to do, poop on me? Which is and what I goes, thought was going to happen. Same here. Oh, no. <laughs> I knew from the minute they opened I was like, oh, my man is going to get blasted. Maybe it's because I I'm thought from South that Dakota. too, but just in a different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she goes, and the horse kicks him in the chest. Yeah. Now, there is a lot of things. There are a lot of things in this film that are very unrealistic, and him being able to stand up after that <laughs> is one of them. You can easily die from a horse kicking you. Yeah. Just straight up, even in the chest, you could internal bleeding, etc. So it's kind of this, there's a lot of suspension of disbelief here, is what I'm saying. But he turns to... Leilani. To Milani, and he goes, choose the grease. Yeah. (laughs) Which she does. She does. And he is able to, what, trip them as they walk over? Well, like, it's weird. Because, like, they get caught up in, like, moving her chair, like, to the ground. So they could, like, pour it over. Oh, yeah. And the fact that he, like, got kicked. The chair the chair broke when he got broke. kicked. Yeah, the chair got broke, and he's able to free himself. And somehow, yeah, she, she, they tip her over to get a better vantage of the grease on the face. <laughs> and then there, a fight ensues, and they get free. Yeah. And they make a, make a run for it. And oh yeah, because there's a fight, and she, <laughs> yes, go ahead. He goes well, on the count of three, right? Yeah, and then she runs, and he stays. Yes, yeah, and then he runs after her, and then they go to a discount store to get oh, yeah. changed. Yes, and clean up his face, and uh, there's a very sexually charged moment where he's changing his shirt, and it's painful. It's very Indiana Jones. 
and yeah and they get changed into these ridiculous outfits unicorn and uh like a what is it it's not a bomber jacket it's like a letterman's jacket that's tacky it's like a it's uh he's wearing some streetwear yeah it looks very silly and out of place on him oh he has a it looks like there's a new orleans saints logo on his oh that's fun on his shirt Um, yeah she has like a unicorn like hoodie right yeah Yeah, it's a hoodie with an actual unicorn head on the hood and they go outside and they get another Uber. It's not an Ubi Poo this time. It's just a regular Ubi. Yes. And these cops show up and they're like, oh no, they know, they know, they know, they know. And then they just give them a dirty look and they go, oh, thank gosh. They're just regular racists. Yeah. <laughs> Very solid. They get in the Ubi Poo. It's not a poo. Oh, they they get in the Ubi. Mm-hmm. They go to Bicycle's apartment first. Oh, of oh, course. Criminy. Right, right. Uh, right. They go to Bicycle's apartment. It's full of frat boys and Because at the in the barn they find a piece of paper. Yes. That has an address on it. So they go to that apartment yes. to that building. And they see all these frat boys putting pictures in envelopes, pictures in envelopes, writing names on it, blah 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 blah. blah. They're hiding in someone's room. There's this whole bit with them breaking in. It's very funny. Um, oh my gosh! And- so okay, as they're breaking in, <laughs> okay. I have to me- I have to mention this because I, yeah, I yeah. laughed out loud a couple times during this movie. And Great. there's a whole to do in the first scene about how he doesn't watch reality shows, and she's like, "Well, isn't that what a documentary is?" And he's like, "Oh no." Yeah. And she's <laughs> like, "All right, whatever." Um, and so they're trying to. In- at first, they're trying to get in through the front door, and it's a glass door. And he's telling her that she should take her heel and uh, smash it oh, right. perpendicular through the glass door. He's like, I, and he explains it very scientifically. And he's like, "Yeah, I saw it on MythBusters." Yeah, she says, "If I even watch reality TV," <laughs> and he says something about, you know, well, that's. That's not it's more of a docu. More of a docu series, right? And then she tries it, and it does not work, and it breaks the heel off her shoe. And he says, "Oh yeah, that myth was busted." That's very <laughs> solid. He also like says the the pointy bit, the knife bit. She goes, "You mean the heel?" Yeah. <laughs> Which is very solid. Yeah. But they climb up the fire escape, and then they break into this fella's room, and they're in the. This apartment, all these, you know, they're putting pictures in envelopes, writing mom, and then uh, they're like, okay, I guess it's some sort of blackmail scheme because they see pictures and whatnot. And one of these kids comes into the back room where they are, and it's his bedroom. Yeah, it's his bedroom. And <laughs> Gibran has a full out fight with him, and it's very silly. Despite just getting kicked in the chest by a horse. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah so like there's a lot of tom and jerry nonsense in this movie it's very fun yeah and they're they're insulting him and he's he's like i don't know i don't know what's going on i'm just stuffing pictures in envelopes and then he does give some solid bit of information though so at a point he the kid grabs a hold of Gibran and she keeps throwing objects in the room at him to you know try and get him off of, but it just kept keeps hitting Jabron in the face of the chest. Once again, he's gotten kicked by a horse. The man is suffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and she is not, does not have a good aim. Um, but then they knock, then they interrogate him, right? Yeah. And he basically says, look, this guy, you know, basically bicycle, uh, they figure out, has just hired us to do this, to stuff these envelopes. We're just fret. <laughs> We're just like in a fraternity. We're just college kids making a little bit of cash. Yeah, they say who's bicycle, and he's like, "What are you talking about? Like who is?" But bi- yeah, you know, th- two wheels, pedals. Yeah, I know what a bicycle is. What are you talking? It's so solid. Yeah, it's real fun. But the- but then mustache shows up, mm-hmm. and he pulls out a gun and starts killing people. Right? Yeah, he kills the frat boys in that apartment. Yeah, and they hide in the closet, our, our two protagonists, and do they get found out? No, because Mustache gets a phone call. Mm-hmm. And so they're hiding in the closet, and he is inches away from them. R. Kelly. <laughs> but They're trapped in that closet. 
But then they, uh, but he, then he starts to walk away as he's getting this phone call. And so he walks into the kitchen where the entrance of the apartment is and they pop out of the closet real quick and then make a run for it out the door that they had, out the window they had already broken and down the mm-hmm. fire escape. Uh, and while they Correct. were in the closet and getting nervous, it should be noted that they held hands. Yes. And then they go to the party to unlock the phone, right? Because they're on a trolley. Yeah. And or streetcar, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. They're on a streetcar. They realize that they can probably get more information, but they need this guy's phone to be opened. Yeah, and and Gibran keeps trying to do passwords, and she's like, "You're gonna lock it out, you know? He'd be great at this Keith." And he's like, oh, "Freaking Keith!" And she's like, "Why do you not like him?" And he's like, "I don't like the way he looks at you." He's like, "She, he doesn't look at me like anything." And he goes, "I don't like the way you look at him." So how about that? Yep, uh, that makes sense. That tracks because his reaction to is, "Oh, Keith is Keith might be at the party in the original, you know." breakup scene she said oh Mm -hmm. keith might be there and he's like oh keith might be there it was an outsized uh reaction to keith so Mm -hmm. we're now finding out that it's of course because he's concerned that she is interested in keith but she's like yeah he's a genius with this kind of stuff and he's like oh he's a genius is he and (sighs) she's like listen we got to get this phone unlocked do you want him to help us or not and he's like fine let's go to this party this next scene is the f- stupidest, <laughs> funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Number one, they forget the wine, and everyone's like, ugh. And number two, they're like, why are you dressed that way? They're like, we just came from boxing. Yeah, that's it. Boxing. Gibran boxes outside of his weight class. And he goes, yeah, I'm what's known as a bleeder because I bleed so much that I can't actually play professional box. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. Uh, you should probably see a doctor. Oh, no. I don't know my doctor's number, but it's in my phone. <laughs> but, uh, my phone is locked, and I forgot the password because of all the brain trauma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can you help? And Keith's like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. It's fine. Are you okay? No. <laughs> So Keith and Gibran are fixing our opening of the phone, and then um, and Gibran com- and uh, Keith comments to Gibran like that Leilani is always talking about him and like, always bragging about yeah. him. And Leilani and her friend, yes, are she, Leilani is disposing of this pa- the the pictures of the <laughs> congressperson that they've acquired. Oh yeah, and says I I, I got these dick pics <laughs> from Gibran. And I need you to keep them safe because I can't bear to look at them. And don't you look at them either. And she's like, you printed them out? And she's like, yes, they're special to me. <laughs> yeah. Basically, she confesses that they just broke up and uses that to be like, cool. please hang on to these pictures and don't look at them. <laughs> and then Keith opens up the phone and then immediately they're like, oh, yeah, we got to go. My doctor can see me, but he has to be right now. And he's at a fancy party. Can we please borrow some fancy clothing? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I guess. And by a miracle of miracles, they're the same size as this couple. Yeah. So, but which is not as uncommon as one might think. Mm-hmm. I run into a couple, like not a whole lot of emergencies, but a few emergencies, like where a pant has ripped or something got spilled on somebody. And believe it or not, like a lot of my clothes fit a lot of my friends. There you and go. Vice versa. I, need re- I need to return those. A pair of pants, do you? Okay, Tristan, it's called a G-string, and keep it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so they go to the address that is in the phone that they've unlocked, and it's like a big fancy gala. They have to scan their phone to get in. Mm -hmm. Bicycle's phone. And everybody's in masks. Right. It's like an eyes wide shut thing. They all go into this auditorium. A man with a distorted voice starts calling numbers after they chant a bit, and then... He, when he's finished calling the numbers, people come up while he calls their numbers. And then they go onto the stage and they start making sweet, sweet love. Yeah. Because there, uh, there, there is a bed. They're not just doing it on the center stage floor. No. You know, they have pillows and blankets and what have you. 
and this is kind of a callback between to earlier when she was like when Alani was like you don't do anything exciting and he's like like what he's like you know and they get talking about orgies and she's like I think it's spontaneous and he's like no everyone has that in their google calendar what are you talking about <laughs> and, and then she confuses what a train and an orgy is and it's yeah funny. <laughs> yeah yeah it's very funny and and admittedly this event was in the bicycles and google calendar so he is right yep. The man with a distorted voice says there's an intruder. Imposter. An, in, an imposter. So, you must remove your mask so we can identify this person. If they go three, two, one, two, three. Again, this, this motif. And uh, Gibran and Alani take off their mask. And they go like, they know a true member would never remove their mask. And then the police burst in. And <laughs> everyone runs away, except for... <laughs> our couple and they're just like what what do we do then they're taken down to the station and they're like we've been looking for you all dang day we know that it wasn't you we're trying to keep you safe from this murderer not like you know it wasn't us <laughs> they're like how yes of course you didn't do it why would you have done that and they're like, like you're precisely. a random couple like what <laughs> yeah. And it should be noted oh, yeah. that the sheriff is black, and maybe that has something to do with believing them a little bit easier. I don't know. Mayhaps. Maybe that's not my place to say. Uh, before... Mayhaps. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're perfectly fine to say that. Before they are interrogated, they're waiting in the room for the officers to come in. It's very cute. And there is a couple of officers watching them through the, you know, one-way mirror. And they're like, they're a sweet couple. I hope they work it out. <laughs> yeah, it's very cute. Because they start doing this thing of like, oh, I took a plea bargain. What are you talking about? It's like, oh, I'll see you in court, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's like a cute tongue and cheek thing. Yeah. yeah. So then they get uh, ex- escorted yeah. back home by a police officer. And they're like, wow, that was nuts, right? And then... Oh, I have, to, I have to interject here because <laughs> this is extremely unbelievable. Um, they're like, well, we know you've had a long day, so instead yeah. of questioning you extensively right now, we're going to yeah. send you home with a security detail. And they would absolutely have kept them there and questioned them. Never. No matter how yeah. late and tired they were. Like, they want also- those details as soon as possible in a murder case. Also, this is probably where we should take a break, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much to to you for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're on the Scavengers Network. You can go to scavengersnetwork.com and check out all the excellent content they have there, such as Spooky Spouses, which is uh, two spouses talking about... Spooky things? Scary things. <laughs> yeah, spooky it's things. It's all right there um, on the tin. It's, yeah, it's, it's titular. And... Um, so check that out they got merch for those shows and we got merch too go down to the show notes click on the merch link buy a mug send it to someone you love buy buy a different mug have it sent to your house right fuck you on it send it to an enemy <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. so you can find us on social media at ADC Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And give us a follow there. Interact with our posts. Have a discussion in our Facebook group. And if you want, you can also email us with nice comments. Because I'm very sensitive. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be liked. Our email address is Amateur Detective Club at gmail.com. And if you don't like our podcast, our email address is Pod Detective Amateur. <laughs> this is what I'll also say. If you want to fetch about the show, put in the heading for Tristan. Because <laughs> I'm a big boy and I can take oh. it. I get dunked on constantly on this show. And I'm used to you it. You trying to say I'm not so, a big girl? I would never call any woman a big girl. It's 
That's just asking for trouble. But I'm the youngest of three. I get ripped a new one every time I talk to my family. Just put Fortress it in the subject line. I wish you all could see Tyler's reactions to that that brief interaction we had. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, he's the great mediator between the two of us sometimes. <laughs> mediator? Want to give us money, but don't know how? <laughs> Visit patreon.com <laughs> slash ADCpod. For as little as a dollar a month, you can give us money. <laughs> money, please. And back to the show. <laughs> okay. So they're getting escorted home. Turns out it's Mustache Man, and he is a cop. He's a corrupt cop, and he does this thing, you know, to get extra dough. And there is a good... I, I was, Civil servants are often not paid enough at the local level. Law enforcement, you get a pension. That's all I'm going to say. Sure. A cab. And um, I got a pension for law enforcement. Oh, look at those uniforms. Those boys in blue. Wow, I'll tell you. Oh, speaking of, the um, firefighters have left. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. A cab. All cops are bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to go down there and kick you in the shin for what you just said. I'm going to. Right, right. Oh, my goodness. Now, I say I don't like it one bit. <laughs> um, but uh, he zip ties them in the back of his car, mm-hmm. and he goes to he goes to a marina. And he's gonna drown them. He's gonna drown sons of bitches. <laughs> and they get free from their zip ties by. And this is a callback to earlier. This is a really well constructed script. The callback to earlier. They're in the ubi poo, and and Gibran is like, "Why do they even have lighters in cars anymore? Right. Because it should just be an outlet." And then they use the lighter to free themselves. Yeah, she... Right. They melt the ties, right? Yes, yeah. that is correct. So they go along with him, like, taking them hostage. They get on the boat. There's a struggle. Gibran is being holed by mustache. Somehow, Alani gets the gun. It's pointed at her, and they start bickering. They start bickering back and forth, like, why don't you trust me? This is blah, 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 blah. And then they go, one, two, three. And Gibran ducks down. And Alani shoots the guy in the shoulder. He goes over the side. They're like, oh, thank gosh. He comes back up. He gets bashed in the head. He goes back down. And in the midst of them, of him being down in the water the first time after being shot, they're, you know, embracing in relief. And then mm-hmm. when he comes back up from the yeah. water. It's... Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. And he, while they're bickering, is like, gosh, you guys are so annoying. It's very solid. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of a great movie starring Dennis Leary called The Ref, where he plays a burglar, but the couple is home, mm. and they're so annoying that they stall him enough that he gets caught. I, I remember at Spoilers. least the previews for that. Very funny movie. Very solid. Um, it's later. They're in an ambulance. They start smooching. They've made up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's basically and it. Then, and then cut to yes. a year later. And they're on the amazing race. Oh, right. Right. Yes. And yep. I, they seem to be in the finals. Like, they're going to win. And the next thing they have to do, they round the corner and there's two horses. Ah. Uh, and so. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah. Roll credits. 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 <laughs> what did you guys think of this one? Eight out of ten. Cat does countdown. It's a show that I hope they both go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. But no, eight, eight out of ten. For what reasons? Oh, right. We do that bit, don't we? Uh, <laughs> uh, we're seven folks and we're just delirious. Full Eddie Murphy. Yeah. 
we're almost at seven hours. Um, uh, we got to figure something out. What did I like it? I, uh, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> Oh, like, that's I the love... slug for the back of the box. It was funny. I had a good time. What word do you want from me? <laughs> Tyler Riley. Uh, get ready for that to be, you know, me doing the uh, pull quote for whatever book you come out with next. <laughs> please, 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 please. Uh, but I love Issa Rae and pretty much She's everything so she does. I've been following her since um, her YouTube channel back in the day. Um. And yeah, uh, I thought it was it was the first time in a while that I had like really laughed, like a full belly laughed at a film. Uh, the first time I saw it, uh, I thought, uh, as far as a mystery film goes, maybe like but I feel like that's I don't know. Maybe it's a seven out of ten. <laughs> Just because, like, we don't get to see, like, all the pieces and then we don't get to really see the comeuppance of, like, the true villains of the film. Mm. Who I think mm-hmm. are, like, the Congress and, like, uh, high elite people that are a part of this masked secret society. Um, we just see, like, the un- underlings get their comeuppance, but not the, you know, true culprits, I feel. Uh, so. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I think seven seven point five sounds about right to me. It is a fun movie, as we have talked about in the past, for sure. Um, and it's also a pretty decent movie. Like, it is, as yeah. Tristan mentioned at one point, well constructed. The script, um, they're very charming and funny. Uh, there's a lot of really solid bits, solid comedy. Um, yeah, what. All the stuff that Tyler said about not really being able to get your comeuppance. But I also appreciated so much that they showed a couple who was bickering, but still was able to work it out. Because, and they still bicker in the last scene. Like, they're bickering in the Amazing Grace scene. But it's like, yeah, it doesn't mean you don't have, that your relationship is bad. Like, yeah, it just evolves and goes through change. And she says something really interesting because I've thought about this many times. Um, she said, do you remember that couple that we saw on our first date? And he says, yes, I remember them. And they were sitting together at the table and not saying a word. And she had originally thought like, oh, I never want to be them. But now she's thinking maybe they were just calm and comfortable. And I remember seeing Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And there is a scene where the two of them are sitting at the table and not talking. And that made me fearful also. But I I have come to agree with Leilani that it's a totally fine thing to do. Like you do not need to constantly be engaged with your partner to have a good relationship. And I really appreciated that. Yeah. I agree with that. 9.5 out of 10. Ooh. Almost a perfect movie. The only thing is the mystery is a little weak. Other than that, it is a phenomenal film. It is about an hour and 20 minutes, which is the correct length specifically for a comedy. <laughs> but all movies should be no longer than an hour 45. After that, you're just... It's very funny. It's very tight. Everything comes back. It's, uh, it reminds me a lot of Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is constructed in a way where mm. everything that is set up in the first act pays off in the third. Mm. This is the same. Yeah. That's, that's true. Fair. With, Yeah. It's an incredibly well-constructed script. There, it's, It made me laugh. It make me laugh is good. <laughs> um, it made me laugh both times that I've seen it. I saw it months ago when it first came out. And... I it was it, several laugh out loud moments belly laughs and then the same thing last night when I watched it very solid script very great performances like no complaints absolutely no complaints except for maybe I would have liked more clues and also no mm-hmm. the the half a point just check your takes digitally <laughs> remove <laughs> 
digitally remove the fries. We have the technology. That's what are you true. doing? We do. We have that technology. Absolutely. Do we? Then how come We've they didn't get rid of that Starbucks the cup in Game of Thrones? They didn't. Don't you get me. Just... <laughs> they, they, no, they, HBO can't afford that, but Netflix surely can. <laughs> 9.5 out of 10, almost a perfect movie, highly recommend, hilarious, nothing particularly offensive or vulgar, all of the comedy comes from character, which is always great, even though there are some great one-liners. Um, even the side characters are very funny, the congressman yeah. and his wife are very funny, the hit two hipsters are very funny, even the detective, the sheriff that's after them is amusing. Like, no one, everyone hits their marks incredibly well. I cannot recommend this enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I got. It seems pretty underrated on IMDb, so if anyone can help us fix that. <laughs> uh, if you hated Last Jedi, but love mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Rotten Tomatoes. Oh com. goodness! Yeah, no, it seems. Uh, uh, yeah, I actually don't know why it's uh, it's rated as low as it is. I mean, it's it's. And it, what was also like mixed critically as well. Really, it got a very mixed response. Wh- why? Uh, but both uh, Issa Rae and uh, Camille and Johnny were praised uh, quite extensively. But let me see what their major qualms were. Yeah, I mean, the it's two of really... them are so charming and have such good chemistry. It's it's really lovely to watch. Yeah, well, I think if anything this should be like likened to, it's like, this is a better date night with Tina Fey and Steve Carell, which is kind of the same, oh, sure. similar conceit. Oh, that's right. I, I think I saw that. I haven't seen I it. I think I did see that, yeah. It is, yeah, this, it uh, is yeah. a better date night. You're absolutely right. But IndieWire said that this was flat and algorithmic. Also noted that Issa Rae refuses to quit on the movie even after there's no hope of redeeming it. Which oh I think my is gosh. Ve- That's like, very like harsh. watched very different films. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. I call this meeting of the Amateur Detective Club to a close. Gavel sound. Agatha, no! <laughs> <laughs> what? The Scavengers Network. Creator-driven. Community-focused. Treasured content. Do you wish your life was a little more spooky? Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Reed. And I'm Lindsay Reed. And this is Spooky Spouses, a podcast about ghosts and stuff. Tall tales. If you ever want to find out if a psychic is real or not, commit a crime... (laughs) And then go to them and ask about the crime. Cryptid technology. That's why we can't find Bigfoot, because they don't have trackers. They don't have these apps that are like, here I am, going to the ice cream store later. Scary stories. (laughs) You know what you're going to do? What? Crap your pants. Oh, no. (laughs) Okay. Numbers in general. I just hear or see numbers and my brain shuts off. You can find brand new episodes of Spooky Spouses every week, wherever you get your podcasts. (laughs) Excuse me, part of the Scavengers Network.